Okay guys, welcome to an 8-bit, 16-bit face-off kerfuffle. Now I also include uh, a console version in this. This is Summer Games, released by Epix in 1984. How beautiful is that intro? For a really early game, it was just staggering. Look at the animation in the, the doves. Or the pigeons, who knows? Yeah, just absolutely beautiful. I very first saw this game, it was on an Atari 8 bit, and it was yeah, probably 1983, and it was on the original Atari, Atari 800. It's a multiplayer game, you can have up to 8 players. You get to put your name, and you also get to pick what country you want. Now interestingly, this game alone actually taught me the national anthem of a lot of countries. <laughs> So who says uh, games do not educate? So we'll just go for one player just now. Now obviously this game has got a lot of events in it. There's quite a few different versions I want to look at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play through every event on the C64 and then we'll just pick maybe one or two or maybe, I don't know, two or three whatever uh, events on the other ones just to kind of compare them. So this is the Pole Vault. Yeah, the, gra the graphics were just incredible. I mean, even now, it still looks really good. Can you imagine this back in 1983-1984? So this game, I believe, came out before Impossible Mission, so I'm assuming they, they I was going to say plagiarised, well, that's not really fair, because at the end of the day, it's their animation. This is Epix's game. They obviously used the animation for this wee guy, and he used it for a few games, obviously, Impossible Mission. This game really came into its own, like all these joystick wagglers, when you were competing against pals. You really, really did feel like you were actually competing for real. And then when you get to, you know, if you win the gold medal, you felt really proud as you stood there, listening to the national anthem. <laughs> I'll just stop this, so I'll just uh, commit three fouls and then it'll let us move on. I think 580, if I recall, was my my best. There you go, it shows you there, you've got old world record, new world record. Even the, sort of the, the instrument they use to play the national anthem, it does kind of sound like what it would have at the Olympic Games. Really, really clever. Next up, the platform diving. Oh, ya peach. I always felt that probably Summer Games was the best Epix sporting game. I mean, you had Summer Games 2. You know, they took the animation to a different level. Then you had World Games... Then you had, no you didn't have World Games, you had Winter Games, then you had World Games, then you had California Games, never really played California Games, I must admit, I'd kind of moved on to the 16-bit by that point. And then, did they not bring out, I think they brought out another couple of Summer Games, um, I can't remember exactly what they were called, but to my mind, this is the one that will always be the favourite one for me. Wasn't a big fan. Well, this is 100 metres. No, this isn't the 100 metres. This is the really... Never a big fan of this particular event. Compared to other events, I always thought it looked a bit rubbish. Always felt it looked like you were controlling a caveman. Don't know why. <laughs> yeah, so holding left slows your runner up, but it increases his uh, energy or stamina. Pressing to the right makes him use his stamina, but it makes you run quicker. So it's all about trying to kind of 
pace yourself. But I wasn't a big fan of this event. But again, look at the scrolling, nice silky smooth graphics. Not too sure what's going on with the crowd. I think they could have probably done a, something a wee bit better than dots, whatever they are. Now this event always felt a wee bit, bit luck actually, almost random. Because you could never really build up a good lead. And I'm going to lose. This is 100 metres now, this is pure joystick waggling action. Now I'm actually doing the commentary after playing this, hence the reason you don't hear any noise of me playing it. <laughs> It'd actually been better if they'd made the 400 metres, you know, a joystick waggler as well. But I think the, the thing about summer games, the Epix games, is it didn't rely on sheer waggling power. It was all about strategy, about pressing buttons and that kind of stuff. Now this is the gymnastics. This is really difficult. I could never get a hang, a hang of this one at all, <laughs> as you can see. But look at the graphics. They really are absolutely superb. You get three shots and that is it. Now I have cut out that national anthem between events. This is the relay race. Yeah, it is the relay race. I used to be really good at this. The idea of the game is you've got to try and press the fire button just, I think it's as his arm is underwater. It's one of these events, if you get the timing right, you'll really, really pick up the speed. If you get the timing wrong, like I'm doing here, he practically sl uh, slows to a crawl, no pun intended. But I used to be really good at this, but it's been a long time since I played it. But even now, I think graphically it's still up there. I mean, it still looks a beautiful game, it really does. I mean, that looks like a guy swimming, you know what I mean? It's. One thing that would be nice about this game is if they'd actually had other computer people because at the end of the day all you're doing is you're looking at yourself here. Obviously you could have two people playing at the same time but it'd be nice if they had computer opponents just to kind of make it, give you something to aim for because it's, it's kind of difficult to tell how you're actually doing. Just as you get to the end, just before the end, if you press the joystick to the left you'll do a sort of like a spin kick, you know, and if you time it right then it gives you a bit of an advantage. You can see here, I'm absolutely slowing to a, almost a standstill. Last one. Ah, damn it. If you time it right, if you when you're waiting for the guy to jump in, if you press the joystick to the right, he'll get ready to jump in. But if you time it wrong and you go too early, then it kind of pauses you for a few seconds and you obviously lose some valuable time. Playing it as, an in, as a sort of a single player game, it's not much fun. I mean, it's alright, but you really, really want to play this game with other people. I mean, me and my mates, they, we would frequently have maybe four or five people all playing it at the same time. Absolutely brilliant. This one is basically up and back, so this one's a lot quicker. You can see that I'm starting to slow up already. <laughs> I've completely lost the knack of this. Used to be really good at it. But then I did play it non-stop. Oh, that was a good turn. And the fact that it retained your high scores on disc as well was brilliant. I mean, you did break a world record. You really felt like you'd achieved something special. 
Right, the last event is this skeet shooting. Now, I always used to get, was it 25 out of 25? But as you can see here, I'm absolutely hopeless. This was my event. Nobody could beat me at it. Best tip in this game is get to the centre of the screen, try and move to the centre of the screen, take out the first one and then follow the second one, but I'm doing rubbish. 17, dearie me. So that is the C64 version. And just for posterity you get to see your name. There we go, 8 gold medals. And one last time, let's listen to the Epix National Anthem. Now, like I said, I'm not going to play every version in its entirety, so what I'll do is I'll probably pick three, three events just to kind of compare it. I mean, the C64 is a beautiful version, so it's going to take some beating. So, kicking things off, this is the Commodore Amiga. Now, graphically wise, it looks nicer than the C64. I'm not, I don't think the animation for the guy is any better. I think, if anything, the, the C64 had smoother animation. The doves, eh, they're alright, they're okay. So, we'll go for the pole vault. <laughs> He certainly runs a lot quicker in this version. Damn it. Whee! <laughs> yeah, nice graphics. Bit more colourful. More kind of colouring again. I wouldn't say the graphics are really any better. Although there's a bit of shading going on, obviously a bigger kind of colour palette. Still as difficult. Hey, hey there you go. 3.9. So all about getting the time in to just hit the edge of that uh, board thing. <laughs> Oh, 6.9. Ouch. Right, let's look at this swimming, up and down. Again, you know, the backgrounds are more colourful, but I don't think the animation's any more impressive. So that is the Commodore Amiga one. Moving on, this is the Spectrum. Now, I've got to say, I like the animation of the wee guy, although I think his legs are moving a bit too quick. For the speed he's actually moving up, but for a spectrum that is actually really nice. It's even got some moving flags and animation. The, the little birds is pretty good. So we'll stick with the events we looked at in Amiga. So we'll go for the pole vault first. Nice effect with the fire as well, actually. Blame me, that's a big pole. <laughs> Now 
Graphics are okay, obviously can like monochrome graphics as you'd expect. Hey, but it's pretty playable. Bit slower, certainly slower than the Amiga one. But for a Spectrum and for a conversion, that's not bad at all. That's a pole vault, right? Oh, here we go, we've got a black shadow. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Again, nothing wrong with the graphics, it's really the lack of colour, I suppose, but... Although saying that, the actual colour of the backgrounds is absolutely fine. <laughs> I think you'd break your neck if you did that. Come on, no, too much. Right, swimming. It's hard to see a wee guy. Right, and he goes from kind of white, and then when he gets into water, he turns to a sort of black silhouette. I mean, animation's alright. Animation's probably just exactly the same as the C64. A complete lack of sound, it would seem, though. So that's the ZX Spectrum. Moving on, we've got the Atari 7800. Now this kind of looks a bit like the C64, maybe slightly blockier graphics, I'd think. Animation of the birds is really good. Oh, 10, take that. Belly flop central. And again. Yep, graphics are nice. Nice and colourful. Now this looks... This looks almost identical to C64. Maybe slightly... Slightly more colourful. <laughs> you could practice as well, you could pick an event and just keep kind of playing over and over again. But obviously the fl how on earth did I manage how did I end up going backwards here? Don't understand that at all. <laughs> Right, swimming. Again, very, very similar to C64, which is no bad thing. Now, I seem to be getting slower and slower and slower, no idea why. Son, keep it going. Yeah, that's the Atari 7800 version. Very, like I say, it's very similar to C64. Maybe slightly brighter looking kind of colours. But graphically wise, pretty much the same. Next up is the Apple II, and it's really, really loud. Not quite sure about his uh, spandex trousers. Quite garish colour. Um, but animation's not too bad. I wish you've even got a little cheeky second sort of flame at the bottom left there as well. Yep, 
Again, graphically very similar to the C64 one. I'm not quite sure what the processor was for the Apple. Was it not the same as the C64? I really don't know. I don't know why I even mention these things because I'm a complete numpty when it comes to sort of technical specs and that kind of stuff. If anybody knows what processor the Apple II had, let me know. Secret to this one is all about the timing. If you can sort of, once you know where the optimum point is, try and line the top of your, your uh, pole with one of the little lights at the top. And then once you know exactly where to do it, then you can just basically look to see when you see the pole passing that sort of light, like now you, you pull the joystick down. So that's not bad at all, not bad at all. Obviously it seems to have, I don't know, the, the, sort of the actual, the graphics themselves are absolutely fine. Just a, a slightly kind of dodgy looking colour palette. Oh. <laughs> I was actually quite surprised to see this had a release in the Apple. Yeah, basically the nearer I see, I've got better speed there. The nearer to the edge of the springboard you get, you get kind of greater height, which then gives you greater height when you push off from the sort of horse itself, or the vault thing itself. And I think the more uh, the more somersaults you get, and obviously the most important thing is landing on your feet, and then that gives you a better score. <laughs> it looked like he just fell into the pool there. He tripped up. It was my imagination, it looks like he's he's giving it big licks, but he's hardly moving. <laughs> and oddly, there's a complete lacky sound as well, which is strange. But all in all, not a bad little version in the Apple II. You know, like I said, you know, I suppose people people didn't buy Apple IIs for games. It was, you know, really a business machine. But still a nice little version. So that's Apple II. Next up is the Atari 2600. Now I've no idea what this is going to be like. So I think that's what we're going to get for an intro. It doesn't have the little intro that the other versions has. It's slightly more simplistic sort of a uh, screen. These little guys look like they've got sore backs. Oh, me back! Now, I am the top. Hey! <laughs> Quite nice animation actually, but you can see there it's really it's nothing like nothing like summer sports or summer games I should say in any of the other systems. It's kinda of juice version, but you know still still good fun. No idea how many events this will have. I'd be surprised if I had all of them. I think I ran straight through that last hurdle, oddly. Swim! <laughs> Gotta love the graphics. <laughs> no. <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out what that actually looks like. It looks like some kind of demented crab that's been kind of crushed. Or a spider that's kind of trying not to die. <laughs> Oops, pressing the wrong button there. I love the little uh, straight legs sticking out the back, flapping about. <laughs> It actually looks more like a, a face a face hugger walking along the ground, but 
You know, I shouldn't mock it. We're talking about the well, one of the earliest computer systems. You know, and the fact that it even had a version of this, I suppose, was was probably quite a big thing for Atari Twenty Six Hundred owners. If it wasn't for systems like this, we would never have what we've got now. I've almost stopped dead here. When you think this game is in something like 4K memory, you know, it's just it's absolutely insane. And then what's next? The skeet shooting. Man, actually, that's not bad. That's not a huge... There's not a massive amount of difference between this and the C64 one. If the truth be told. There's no on screen on screen score and I'm assuming it's gonna give you a score at the end of it. <laughs> What's our score? Oh, we shall never know. Anyway, that's Atari twenty six hundred one. This next one is the Sega Master System. And this was the only uh, console version. No, I tell you a lie, we've just played a console version, the Atari 2600, so I think that and the... Well, also the Atari 7800 is a console version, so I'm talking complete nonsense. You can see there's some little demented birds. I think that's what they are. <laughs> kind of done in a more cartoon style than the sort of super realistic version of the, uh, the other versions. Yeah, so I'm thinking of the Sega Master System's only console one, we've actually got the three. Right, let's set the bar. Hi, pull grip, yep, that'll do it. Whoa! Blimey, it starts really quick. Your wee man doesn't even run in for the side, he just kind of appears. Far too early. Come on, we need to get at least one. Oh, here we go. Ah, damn it. Whee! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they've gone for a far more comic kind of style look. Uh, graphics are nice. Really nice use of colour. Animation isn't as good, I have to say. I mean, the graphics are better than other versions, but they're not as well animated. <laughs> and it's just as difficult. Right, here we go. Our little guy's got a bathing cap on and he's off. Now this one, you basically press the fire button as quick as you can, so this completely changes the, the control system from the other versions. The other ones were all about timing. This one is basically smashing the, uh, the button as quick as you can. You can see there a little uh, additional graphics with the little guys at the standing at the end of the pool. Make sure you touch the edge before you turn. So yeah, that's the Sega Master System. This is the Atari ST. Again, nice background graphics. Animation for the main character is quite frankly shite. I mean, look at the animation and the birds there, they, they, me, they're just... It's like they're blown in the wind, there's virtually no animation at all. 
Well, there is animation, but animation is far too slow from the speed they're actually moving at, so, hmm. Yeah, animation, don't know why, it's just, it's, I mean, the Mega animation isn't great, but this isn't even as good as that. Considering the, the ST and the Mega ones were an early, early game, generally you found the Mega one was a straight port of the Amstrad, eh, of the Atari, but in the case with this, the Atari ST is much worse. Yeah, it's just it's it really lacks the kind of frame, the smoothness of the animation of like the Amiga and the, the C sixty four one. And I'm making a complete arse of this. Come on. Right, last event. This is the, is it the four, what is it called? The 100 meter sprint, I think it is. Go, you fool! What's going on? Eight seconds and I've just gone to the pool. That was a good dive. Now, I don't know, I think that this uh, rendering software is possibly making this one look jerky than it was, but I can assure you it's not very smooth. Disappointed with this one, I've got to say. So that was Atari ST. Like this was the one that I saw back in the day. This was when I when I saw this, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. Now the animation of the guy here is not as good as the C64, which is surprising because when you think about it, the Atari 8-bit had been out for quite a long time, and this was an American game, so I would have expected the Atari. 800 version to be better, even the animation of the, the, the I was going to say the seagulls, whatever it is, the doves, isn't as good as the C64 one. This kind of pretty much looks the same as the C64. Yeah, that plays pretty much as you would expect. So, yeah, kind of to summarise, guys, um, C64 one was the one that I played, it's stunning animation, still stands up even today. The Amiga one's not bad, better colour, not 100% convinced about the animation. The ZX Spectrum one is actually pretty nice, it's obviously monochrome graphics. Um, well the backgrounds are colour but the actual animation it's all kind of black, sort of silhouette type graphics. Apple 2, not the greatest, you know, you didn't really expect it to be a particularly good game. But, uh, you know, it still plays pretty well. Atari 2600, it's effectively a cut-down version of the, the main uh, summer games. Master System, they've taken, that was obviously the far, the sort of most recent version of this game. Quite surprised to actually see it getting a release. I think it was 1992 it came out, whereas it came out in 1984 in these systems. Um, yeah, I mean, it, graphically wise, nice and colourful. Um, the, the animation, they've adopted a more cartoony look than the other versions. Other ones have all tried to go for a sort of a, a more realistic, uh, you know, appearance. And then the, la the Atari ST one, disappointed with that. Graphics look okay, but the, there's, the, the frame rate is poor. Not a fan of that one at all. And lastly, the Atari 800 version, it's, it's okay. It's not as impressive as I remember it to be. I don't know why the swimmer is purple. Is it Mr. Blobby has gone on a diet? If you don't know who Mr. Blobby is, ask your mum and dad. Um, it's okay. It's not a patch in the C64. Without a shadow of doubt, the C64 version is the best version to play. Absolutely. Um, there's not any other version that even comes close. Spectrum one's not bad. Amiga one is okay. 
not a big fan of the Master System one because it's kind of colourful graphics. I've tried to kind of cartoonise it. Um, but yeah, if you want to play the best version of this, in my opinion, and it is just my opinion, I would say go for the C6401 every single time. So that is it, guys. If there's a game you want to see me feature in the 8-bit face-off kerfuffle, just put your comments down below as we wait for Mr. Blobby to come in. Hey, and as always guys, thank you very much for watching.